Hey guys, welcome back. Today, we're doing a sweet giveaway, coming up. So that's right, today we are gonna be giving away this Everyday Carry three finger knife that was handmade by me as a way of showing my appreciation to all you guys who have subscribed to the channel to get us up to around a thousand subscribers. So first, we're gonna go over how I made this knife and then afterwards, we'll go over the details of the giveaway. So sit back and enjoy the build. So we're gonna be using a piece of 1084 by eighth of an inch thick uh, bar stock from New Jersey Steel Baron. I get most of my steel from him. Uh, I found it to be good quality, but also a good deal when you order in bulk. We're gonna first cut it out on the bandsaw and then move on to the belt sander to do some profiling. This is the Bauer bandsaw. I did a review on it and I'll put it in the cards above, but it's held up really good. I've used it for about nine to 10 months now and it hasn't skipped a beat. Just gotta make sure you get good blades for it though. If you use cheap blades, it, it won't perform. So we get the uh, blade cut out. Now we're over to the two x 72 belt sander to profile it. I'm using the small wheel attachment here to rough in the, uh, the, uh, the finger choil there. And then we're marking out our blade so that we can drill some holes in the tang. We're going to be drilling number 13 holes. Uh, these two holes will accept our Corby fasteners. And then I'll drill some holes in between them uh, just for weight reduction. So then we mark out our bevels and our center line. And we'll be grinding to both of these uh, with our rough bevels, uh, preheat treat bevels. So I've been enjoying using this bevel jig to start my rough grinds. Uh, I'll say about 80% of the material removal I'll do with the jig, and then I'll move on to freehand to line everything up. So this jig, I, I made it a while ago. I'll also put a link in the cards. I did a build video on this, super simple. It's just a piece of quarter inch angle iron. So it's, it's good enough to get you started, or at least get me started, and then I'll move on to uh, the hand the, the hand grinding. And you can see here, this was a new J-Flex belt, so I broke the belt over the corner of my platen. And then I'll move on to the other side. Notice that I changed out to a new ceramic belt. I was using an old belt there, and to all those guys who are just getting into this, feel free to throw away belts. If you get a belt that seems like it's cut and dull, just go ahead and throw it away. Move on to a new belt, you'll be happy you did. You'll waste more time with an old belt, Dell belt than you will if you just moved on to a new belt. So I should have moved on to a new belt a while ago with that, that old ceramic. Uh, the new ceramic cut great though. Those are VSM ceramics from Pops. So then I just get the flats up to uh, 220 grit finish real fast before the heat treat. The uh, the bevels are at a 120 grit J-Flex finish. I go in and I file in my Spanish notch because uh, you won't be able to do that post heat treat. So this is how it sits pre heat treat. I go ahead and I start up my tempering oven. It takes about 20, 30 minutes to get up the temp. So I'll normally start it first and then I'll get the forge going. I'm using my new burner from my last video, um, or I guess a couple videos back, but this is my new forced air burner. I can run at super low temps, and I have a thermal couple in there so I can get precise temperatures uh, on my heat treat. So I'm running about half a PSI there. The first thing I do is I heat up my quench oil to around 120 degrees Fahrenheit, and I actually did two normalizing cycles, and then you'll see, you're seeing right here the quench that I did at 1500 degrees Fahrenheit and it file tested wonderfully. It skated the file all over it, which is great. I think I clean it up a little bit with a piece of sandpaper and then it's off to the tempering oven. I'll do two cycles at 410 degrees Fahrenheit. Each cycle will last around two hours. This is the PID controller working uh, like it should oscillating between 209 to 211 uh, degrees Celsius. After the tempering, I'll come back over to the 2x72 with a 
fresh J flex belt and start cleaning up the bevels. I wanted to see how much I can do with the grinder on this knife. Uh, I knew it was going to be a giveaway, so I wanted to try some new stuff on it. And it, I did pretty. I think I did pretty good. I mean, I got the I got the bevels up to a 220 grit cork belt here, and uh, they came out really nice. So I think I can start uh, going further with the belt sander in the future. Uh, one thing I would have done differently is I would have done the flats first um, before doing the bevels because uh, I didn't want to mess up the bevels while doing the flats. So what I tried to do is I got my platen a little proud of those wheels. I placed the knife on the belt and then turned the grinder on at a slow speed to try to get the bevels without, I mean, try to get the flats without messing up the bevels. And this, this worked okay. Uh, I wish I would have just hit the flats first and then I could have moved on to the bevels later, but this got the job done. So after I, I got the flats cleaned up, uh, I'm going over here with my stencil and I'm going to etch in my maker's mark uh, with DC power. D DC power to get it nice and uh, nice and deep there. And I clean the blade off with a little bit of alcohol and then put it into ferrochloric acid for 10 minutes. After it's etched, I'll take a piece of steel wool to it and then I'll coat it in baking soda to make sure all that acid is neutralized. And then it's off to shaking. Uh, I, shake, I shake the blade in a container full of rocks for about five minutes here. It felt like 20 minutes. All right, then we clean the blade up, and uh, next step is going to be getting some handles on this guy. So I have two pieces of canvas micarta, and I took them over to this uh, granite block to get them flat. You can see there it's not flat. Uh, this took a little bit of time. Uh, these pieces, uh, they didn't come to me flat, so a little 60 grit piece of sandpaper got them nice and flat, though. And I'll clamp them together and onto the blade, and I'll use the blade as a drill guide. And then it's over to this win, win tabletop, bench top drill press to get those two holes drilled. And then we'll cut off the excess with the bandsaw, and then grind kind of close, but not all the way to our lines there um, around the handle. Using this high tech two by four. 45 degree angle jig, uh, we're going to start our bevels on the front of the handle scales. And then I think I took those up to around the 300 grit finish, maybe a 600 grit finish on the front of the handle scales. So this uh, rig up on my mini mill is something I use a lot, just two, one, two, three blocks uh, to have a flat surface to drill with. But I'm using the uh, counterbore from Pops. This thing's been awesome. If you're looking for a counterbore, go get your quarter inch counterbore from Pops because I had two that I had made and they pale in comparison to the quality of the one you can buy. Then I made sure my dimensions were right on the Corby's, cleaned up all of the components, and then got on to the glue up. We're going to be using G Flex epoxy and two brass Corby fasteners. You want to make sure you mix that G-Flex for 20 to 30 seconds there. A lot of the strength can be negated if you don't have a good mix. So I normally put in the two female Corbys first, uh, lather up the scale with glue, then I'll lather up the knife with glue and place the knife on the scale. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side with the male Corbys and then just tighten them up. Not too tight, but oh, not too tight, but uh, tight enough to be snug. You don't want to you don't want to squeeze all the glue out of your joint. So I'll, I'll wipe down the front of the handle scales with a little bit of alcohol there, and use a Q-tip to get nice and close in that crevice. Then let it dry for 24 hours, a cure, and I cut off the Corby's and start sanding on the belt sander. I'm starting here with a 60 grit belt, uh, just a normal aluminum oxide belt. Uh, I find it's not worth wasting the um, the ceramic belts on handles. And then I have a uh, scalloped one inch by 72 belt there and those things are 
badass. They'll get you they'll get you 80% of the way there on your handles. And then we move on to the hand sanding. I, I hand sand this handle to a 320 grit finish. Uh, making sure to smooth it all out. Afterwards we go ahead and we make a little Kydex sheath here. If you're looking for eyelets, make sure you uh, try getting your eyelets from a reputable United States manufacturer. I found the Chinese eyelets uh, crush way easier. I've been getting mine from uh, DIY holsters and their, their eyelets are awesome. Their eyelet die is really nice too. And that's their eyelet die right there. So this sheath was super tight. I went ahead and uh, ground away a little extra around uh, around where your fingers go just to make sure that it's not too tight. It was almost too tight to get out. And then we go to the belt sander and start sharpening it. I knock off most of the material and then come over to the Edge Pro and put a 400 grit diamond sharpening stone on there and get it nice and sharp. We strop it on some leather and it cuts and it shapes. So that's it. That uh, finishes up this build. Um, I think it came out pretty good. It, you know, I like the handles. You know, like normal, I love canvas uh, micarta, natural canvas micarta. The Corby fastener is a last a lifetime, and uh, yeah, knife came out really good. So stay tuned. In about five seconds, I'm going to tell you how to enter the giveaway. All right. So let's go over how you can enter the giveaway. So you have to do two things. Number one, you have to be subscribed to this YouTube channel. And number two, you have to comment below with the words subbed. Now, also in your comment, if you can, please include your Twitter and Instagram handle so that I can contact you if you win. If you don't have either of those, it's not the end of the world. All you have to do is make sure you stay tuned for the announcement video and I will put my email address in the description so that you can contact me. Uh, so that's it. The shipping will be free if you live in the lower 48. If you live outside of that, uh, I, you will have to pay for shipping. I'll send you an invoice via PayPal and we'll settle up on that. So that's it. Uh, good luck to everyone who enters and I'll catch y'all on the flip side.